So Eric, why do you, would you like to become uh, Shasta County's district attorney? Well, I love this community. Uh, I've been here with my family six and a half years. We've grown to love the spirit of patriotism, volunteerism, and just independence uh, that we have here in Shasta County. And when I was asked by members of the community to help out, uh, I couldn't say no. Uh, this is a place that I love. I want there to be a great future for my children. And uh, this is my opportunity to, uh, to help out and to make this a better place for all of us. So what qualifications do you have that uh, would make you a district attorney? Well, first of all, I'm not part of the problem. You know, I think in our county, there is a long history of government bureaucrats who have grown comfortable and complacent, uh, no longer concerned about the will of the people and more concerned about padding pensions. You know, I, like my opponent, have 20 years experience in the law as an attorney. The difference is that I've spent my time in private industry. And in private industry, you have to provide measurable results. And that's precisely what I intend to do for the people of Shasta County. You mentioned measurable results. Conviction rate has come up as kind of a controversial topic in this race. Uh, the district attorney claiming it's more than 90% and then others saying it's less than 50%. How do you rectify that? Well, really, it's a conversation of apples and oranges. So the criticism that was levied against the district attorney's office by the local legal community was in relation to trial convictions. And those trial conviction rates have been abysmal. Every single year that my opponent has been in office, they have gone down. Most recently, in the most recent fiscal year, the conviction rate at trial was an abysmal 43%. That's very far below the state average, which we estimate to be between 80 and 90%. So that are, those are the apples. What the district attorney's office produced in response, and they called what we produced, which by the way was from the Superior Court here in Shasta County, they produced oranges. They gave a completely different figure based upon an entirely different metric that included a variety of offenses uh, that had no significant bearing upon public safety. It also included plea deals prior to trial on citations and a variety of other offenses. And it did not include the 3,000 cases that they decided not to pursue. It's almost like shooting fish in a barrel. As the prosecutor, you get to decide which cases you're gonna pursue or not. A 92% conviction rate overall on the cases you decide to pursue is not particularly impressive. What we're concerned about are trial conviction rates. And one of the reasons that's so important is because there has to be a sense in your opposition that there is a risk of going to trial. If you don't have that sense of risk in the legal community that you're uh, going to be effective at trial, then you can't negotiate effective plea deals. And again, this comes down to metrics. My opponent has said that they do great plea deals, but quite frankly, there's no way for any of us to know. This is something that would require disclosure of information that they have yet to reveal. And this is one of the big issues that I see with our district attorney's office, a profound lack of transparency. Uh, what kind of programs would you like to see in the DA's office uh, should you be elected? And that would obviously be in the future. Right. So I do think that a lot of the problems stem from a lack of transparency. When there is a lack of transparency, you can have a breakdown in accountability because nobody has any objective way to measure your performance. So one of the first things that I like to do is to make sure that the public has access to key metrics that can reveal objectively the performance of the office. I think people want to know what cases are being pursued, how many are being pled, how many of them are proceeding to trial, and what the success rate at trial really is. In fact, we still don't even know what the conviction rate is per charge. When I gave you that 43% figure earlier, that was per case. So we can almost guarantee, in fact, there is no guarantee, we know that the conviction rate per charge is going to be much, much lower. I've been trying to pursue that data for several weeks and have not been able to receive it. 
The other thing that we need to do in terms of programs is to institute uh, organizations uh, that will rally the power of the people. You know, we have to empower the people of this community to protect themselves. We have to support law enforcement, but there's a limit to what they can do. And there's a lot of people who live in areas where law enforcement does not have a very quick response time. And I think it's important that the people of this community feel comfortable in their ability to defend themselves, to protect themselves from crime, to be knowledgeable about those areas of the law. A lot of the people that I talked to on the campaign trail expressed concern that if they were to protect their community or their person or their property or their things, that they would find themselves sitting in a defendant's chair in a courtroom. And that's not right. We need to make sure that people feel comfortable, that they're aware of the law, and they can defend themselves and their proper property without running afoul of the law. So I have, uh, as part of my team, uh, Thomas Toller, who not only has 10 years training district attorneys out of Sacramento, but he has also created modules for police officers, and I would like him to do the same thing for the public, that people who are interested in our program uh, in the community can participate, become knowledgeable about what they can do, not only to prevent crime, but also to garner the evidence necessary for a successful prosecution. Your thoughts, opinions uh, on the death penalty? I am in favor of the death penalty. The fact of the matter is, is that it is an effective deterrent. Obviously, it's only for appropriate cases. But where it is appropriate, I support it 100%. And it's an absolute shame that the people of this state have affirmed their belief in the death penalty. But in spite of that affirmation, our governor has put a moratorium on death penalty conviction, on death penalty sentences. That is a travesty of justice. And I am very much opposed to any effort to eliminate the death penalty. I think it is one of the most effective uh, deterrence for serious crime in our state. And uh, the role of the district attorney in jail overcrowding, what is it or, or, or is there really a role? Well, I think everybody agrees that we need more jail space. You know, there's no argument on that issue. But I think that we have to focus upon the things that we can do. So often, the local politicians, particularly those in law enforcement, play a blame game. And the you know, proposition that gets most of the blame is Prop 47. Prop 47 was instituted in 2014. We've had many years to adapt to this. And you know, the fact of the matter is, we're not going to have anything out of Sacramento save us, or Washington, DC. If we're waiting for legislation that will solve all of our problems, we're going to be waiting for a very long time we need to figure out local solutions for what is a local problem. And I think we need to be creative about it. And that's one of the things that I hope to bring to this uh, equation here as district attorney, a new set of eyes looking at old problems. If you walk down the streets in our community, you see the evidence of crime everywhere. Just last night, I was driving home from the rodeo, and all I had to do was look under every bridge, and you saw illegal homeless encampments. We have to do something about this. We have to be creative. Prop 47 is not an excuse. You know, it does make it more, uh, it, it makes it difficult to put some of these people in jail, but it doesn't prevent you from prosecuting. And so one of the first steps is to begin to prosecute the crimes that are referred to the district attorney's office. Like I mentioned earlier, this last year, there were nearly 3,000 cases referred to the district attorney's office that they did not pursue. That represents roughly 28% of all referrals by law enforcement. This is a huge problem. It's very difficult for law enforcement officers to do their job, and I know from speaking with many of the officers on the street that they feel disheartened by the lack of prosecution. Anything else you'd like to say? Well, I think we're living in a very interesting time, and I think people have a choice this election. And, and that's really something that I'm pleased and very privileged to give to this community. My opponent was appointed, and then, like so many officials in our local government, ran unopposed. I think in the last 30 years, there's only been two contested elections for district attorney. The important thing for us to realize is that this is not 
her office. It's not even the office of her employees. This is the office of the people. And I promise, as district attorney, to be your representative, to represent your interests, irrespective of any mandates that may come down from Sacramento or any tyranny that may be around the corner. I've mentioned one of the important things that I have in my platform is to protect the people from government overreach. My opponent has said that she does not even understand what I am referring to. I think this really highlights the contrast between the two candidates. My allegiance is with the people, and I will defend their constitutional rights. I will not be beholden to government bureaucrats. I don't owe anybody anything. My allegiance will be with you, the people of Shasta County. I wish that you would vote for me. I look forward to serving you, and I believe that we can make Shasta County safe again. Thank you.